Hello guys, welcome back to sequence part 3. Today we're gonna go through generic sequence, a specific type of the sequence that uh, is constructed in a bit different way. So before, in the second, in part 2, we discovered how arithmetic sequence works, right? And we also figure out the formula for n's term. Here is in generic sequence, We'll discover the same. I'll derive the formula first of all. I'll try to explain the principle and in the most clearest way. And actually, let's start from this sort of sequence. You are given numbers 6, 12, 24, 48. All right. So let's count them as the first term, second, third, fourth. So, as always, we have the question try to find the, the following terms. In the sequence like next to for example and try to derive the general formula for you and basically how the formula will look like okay let's try to answer those questions if you start normally from difference you understand the difference this is not the case because difference is changing so the first difference six so if we move next that's 12 and so so remember in the very first video, we we discovered how to cope with different sort of sequences, and, and exactly this is the case. When you need to have a look at numbers and try to think about how they connected, like basically about general rule. All right, let's see. If you multiply by two, six, you'll you'll come to twelve. You do the same for a second term. You multiply by two, you arrive to twenty four. So it looks like the logic here is every time multiplying by t the previous term, and that's how you write to the next term. Okay, so for this reason, we just write down several terms. Let's say u3, according to this rule that we recently set up. And let's try to start from the very first term. Is always 6, so u1 is just 6, we don't do anything. Then, in order to arrive to 12, that's the second term, we need to start from 6, and basically multiply by 2, right? So, so you can say that it's u1 multiplying by 2, okay? So, the next third term, we're starting off from again the previous term u2 and this is 12 so we're taking 12 and multiplying by 2 but what if we write in the same manner using just the very first term all right what should we do we need to say that it's actually 6 by 2 that was u2 because u2 is here and it's written down in this manner so it's 6 by 2 and we still need multiply by 2, okay? So that's why if we generalize, we can write, this is u1, so we can write u1 times 2, obviously squared. All right, let's consider u4. So can we do immediately through the first term? Of course we can so that's actually u1 let's have a look at the value so turns out to be 48 so we just write in u1 and multiply by 2 cubed all right so that how we can get u4 all right i think you got the logic so let's see the logic it stays behind the terms how we can generate them so every time you take in the very first term, u1, everywhere, and we multiply by a specific number in different powers. So for example, for u2, the power is 1. For u3, the power is 2. And for u4, the power is 3. So it looks like it's clearly seen that in order to get un, not for this is n like general term in the sequence we skip several steps so we need to take the very first term u1 we need to use 2 in the power let's see how power is connected with the number 
when the number counting number is three, the power is one less. So four, one less is three. All right. So for n's term, we need to have power that is one less than the number. All right. So that's the general formula. Okay. And what type of the sequence we we have today? So. Before, remember, in the arithmetic sequence, we always add specific number of step, and that's why we call we we, we call this step as a difference. So uh, we add n minus one step right to the very first term in order to arrive to n term. Right, that how a formula looks like. In this case, instead of adding difference, we multiply by a specific number. So this number is basically allows to allows us to connect two adjacent terms like u2 with u1, right? So how they connect it's just u1 times this specific factor 2. All right. Or u3 is just u2 multiplied by 2. So instead of difference here we use the factor, we use multiplication. And that's what is called common ratio. So this factor 2 is called common ratio. So you can clearly see here. This common ratio is not changing as it was for arithmetic sequence that was difference. In this case, that's common ratio. Common ratio. Why is it called ratio? Because if you express ratio from here, you can say that it's going to be u2 over u1, right? Equals to 2. Or it's u3 over u2. So generally, we can say that common ratio might be found through un, for example, plus 1, the next term, over the current. Because you see the fraction, or in other words, you can say it's ratio, and that's why what is called the common ratio. So why it's common? Because it's common for every two adjacent terms, no matter what ter which terms you're actually taking. So you might take, for example, un. In this case, you need to divide by the previous term, all right? Anyway, the fraction is gonna be the same and it becomes common ratio, all right? So that's why how we can figure out the general formula for geometric sequence. So let's generalize this case. So instead of 2, we will use common ratio to the power n minus 1. Okay? So as you so as you move through different type of sequences, I hope you get the general idea. So you so obviously you need to develop the skills to see like general things uh, on different example and trying to uh, put some analogy between them. Let's compare with what we have for arithmetic sequence. u1 n minus 1 times d. So again here you add some number of steps while here you're multiplying with some number of common ratios. Okay that's works in a very similar manner. However, instead of adding, we need to multiply. So that's why in terms of addition, because we add some number of steps, right? We add steps. That's why it's called arithmetic. Here it's geometric because you probably heard geometric expansion. It means like very fast growing. So let's consider how like how it looks like if you plot two graphs. So if you're not familiar with graphs, it will be fruitful for you. So that's for geometric sequence and that's for arithmetic. So let's compare geometric as a function of counting number versus arithmetic one. Okay. If we lay out them in the, in the Cartesian plane, so un from, let's say, n. So we can say that this Arithmetic sequence is going to be just a straight line starting from u1 as y intercept and having gradient, um, I think in this case, 
is actually n minus 1. Yes, it is the variable, so d becomes the gradient. Because we can expand, but like in the simplest way, it just looks like this. So the gradient is d, right? So while here, if we're trying to lay out geometric series as the function, I used the black one for that. So it will be like a to the power x, right? So like index. And as you understand, when, for example, n equals 1 as becomes u1, so this starts simultaneously in the same point, while a to the power x, like r to the power n minus 1, let's say, it's growing rapidly and faster, okay? So that's why the, the huge difference. All right, so let's just give in the end, I'll give you a definition of what geometric sequence. So basically, it's a geometric sequence sort of sequence where each term can be found by multiplying the previous term by the same constant number. That constant number is called ratio, all right? So that's an idea. And symbolically, you can write this rule as the following. So in order to find u n plus 1, let's say in the next term, you need to take the previous term and multiply by common ratio. That's what is called geometric sequence. All right, so I think that's pretty enough for understanding. And in the following video, we'll probably try to apply this logic to maybe several examples. Hope you enjoy. See you.